Actually, one time I actually tried to buy back a film and burn it with First Blood. The first cut was so bad on First Blood that uh, I went out in the alley and threw up. So I went to Andy Vine and said, can I buy the print? He goes, why? So I could burn it. Really, it's just, it's my, it's just, it's horrifying. And they wouldn't, they wouldn't do it. I said, well, can we edit it? Do it. All right, get in there and edit. So I cut it for three hours to 89 minutes. So I cut out all my dialogue. He just never talks until the end. And, but that's what sold it. That's what, that's the whole concept of that silent character, which wasn't silent. True story. Mm -hmm. So, it really is, is, that movie is like a minor miracle. But you never know. Gets back to bleeding and pain <laughs> and aggravation, and you have a good film. Ready? Giselle is uh, a rare breed. She's a Brazilian actress who really insisted on doing primarily all her own physical work. And those were somewhat difficult stunts, especially when she was going to be waterboarded. I was going to use a double because it's dangerous. She said, no, I want to do it. And believe it or not, she actually is being waterboarded in the scene. So like, can we go to 15 rounds for Jody's camera? Because he's going from yeah, gun 15. to you and blah, blah, blah. It'll yeah, more the better. He'll give him an extra beat. <laughs> he's a happy camper. This is gonna make your nipples just stand right <laughs> up. <don't it? laughs> Ready and action. So we're gonna pick it up right there. So it'll be a single on me, single on Jason, single on Jet, and the fourth one, it'll be a single going back and forth between Terry and Randy, okay? Action! A lot of times action movies get a, a bad rap as being easy or inferior to traumatic films, but having done both, I have to say that action films are very, very taxing physically. If they're done right, they, they take everything out of you and the camera has to tell a story and you have to physically be up to telling the story with your body. In other words, going through the actual uh, mechanics of making the people believe that what you're doing is somewhat heroic. Cut. Cut. You got one minute to put this together. You're going to ask him the same question a second time. He's okay. giving you lip, right? Again, why he's going to say bird washing again. Bam. OK. Bird washing. No, no. Don't hit him. Who sent you? And not it. <laughs> We used to start when we did in the business, we just have one or two choreographers that were in the same team of very similar martial arts. In the, in the last few years, we've been experimenting with mixing the Hong Kong styles with more of the American styles and even some of the European flavors. And with the right people, as long as it's talked about beforehand, it's been pretty productive. We've gotten some neat little mixes of uh, ideas. So, I'll show some pieces. Those are on the same time. Yeah. yeah. So now, as he kicks pain down, pain starts to get up. Okay, you come in. Same time, total will start coming in from the back side. So now we have three stories. Step, step, step. You see Sam? This is you. You're going to go after pain this way. You grab the gun okay. and go. And action. Cut. Jason takes it so seriously. He thinks he's a soul. Hey, uh, Jimmy, tell me up here. Right about there. What's that, Sly?
I mean, we're not expecting this because I'm trying to get ahead of schedule here, so this wasn't planned for like two. I thought, all oh, right, I get two weeks to prepare. Two hours. Oh, come on. We'll throw some more sand out for you guys. Stand on the camera. Pictures up. There you go, guys. And roll sound. Oh. Oh, right here. Please, please. Don't mind trying to keep Let him get the pressure on. Push harder. What's... Did that work? Just the... See, this, this is the difference between wrestling and uh, the movie-making process. If this would have happened in a wrestling ring, no big deal. But, you know, since it happens on a movie set, you got to throw ice on, throw makeup on, try to keep continuity. BS, but... That's the movie business. I remember the last time I worked with a wrestler was with Hulk Hogan. And people said, don't do it, don't do it, he's too big, he's too big. And I said, that's the whole point. And I remember laying there and seeing his shin bone coming down on me. And it was like a building landing right on top of me. I never felt anything like that. It just jarred everything in my body. And I said, I realized one thing you can't fake in wrestling is gravity. <laughs> Let's take a look. You know, it usually takes about a month to start feeling better. If we can inject this and put a shot right there, you'll feel really good. You can ice and elevate and take it easy. Will it help accelerate the healing a little bit? It does. It does? Yeah, it does. Yeah, this, this part right here 
is supposed to be attached down across this spot. So is that old or new? The best thing medically is to fix it. No. Yeah. The thing is, I don't know what to do. Do you like just shut the film down? Which is the disaster. You have to shut it down for four months, or you'll lose everyone. Yeah. Chance. Jason. Jason's got another ruby in August. <clears throat> The question is whether you can do the stuff you need to do. I have to. I mean, you know, my, my thought would be to, with not understanding any of this, the movie business stuff would be, he needs to come home and have you fix it, like now. I cannot stress enough that we are moving it forward. That's how it's happening. These trucks are out. This thing blows, it'll be gone. This helicopter's gone. So you'll have these, these fires going here between the statue and, and then of course we have our building coming down. So we're we have this hellacious crap going on behind us and we're being shot at this direction. So we have this uh, really interesting uh, wall of destruction going on both sides. We've seen the men fight hand to hand in the tunnels. The last thing I want to do is see them now fight again in the field because I think it becomes redundant. This has to be a, a whole other uh, balletic thing, for lack of a better word. And what you're going to see is actual mechanical, technical mayhem, where now you understand who the expendables are. They're just, they're, they're literally walking war machines. They are, because they, they're not willing to, to give an inch and they're willing to die. Now you're going to see why they're expendable. They're pinned down, there's no hope. I've wired the entire building in a way that a demolitions expert in Las Vegas would wire a casino that has to come down. They're not going to explode it, they're going to implode it, which is a method to their madness. And that's going to create a diversion. It's the only thing that would save their life. If it was an explosion, it wouldn't help at all, because they would be blown up too. The entire bottom of this palace begins to implode, which creates a kind of like, not a firestorm, but just a a hellacious dust storm and, and debris storm, which will, we just worked on this tonight. <laughs> this will be a tidal wave coming towards these men, something they've never faced before. It's not about bullets anymore. They're literally going to be engulfed in debris. You have to stand like soldiers. You're not like this. You're about ready to kill. You're about ready to go into battle. So be alert. You're on camera. Action! When you're doing a film that is trying to be as truthful as possible and you're using ammunition that fires a flame 10 feet long that if you get too close to your partner you can scorch him, you can cause real damage or a man gets too close to a, an explosive, it can, it can lay him out. I've, I've seen it before, it literally blow a hole in a person and I've seen stuntmen taken to hospitals and, and you know like <laughs> in gurneys screaming in agony, but you you say, okay, wh wh how far are you willing to push this? And these guys are willing to step up and, and work with fire, work with bullets, work with incredibly dangerous situations. And that, I felt, is the difference between making an action film that relies a lot on CGI and just putting your guts and your nuts on the line and, and going for it. <laughs> We don't have a $200 million budget to make it uh, extraordinarily visual, but we have enough desire to make it brutally real. It's trying to be original when all originality has been done a long time ago. So the only thing that can be original here is the kind of the emotion and the process of the attack. Ready, action! All these guys are being pulled out of their comfort zone, believe me. Why don't we just pick up? I mean, if you're happy with it. No, no, no. I think just that piece, Vern. Yeah. They're giving me things I haven't seen before. And and that's what's going to make the difference. I need to see you. Okay. Three. I killed killers. That's what I do. Do you take out the trap. All right, good. Here comes the guy. Okay, here we go. The only thing that never runs out of being exciting to watch is human courage and overcoming odds 
and, and, and knowing that character. You know what? Afterwards, I'd have a beer with him. In other words, you gotta have some human touch, and that's the hardest thing to do. Bullets are easy. You can buy them at 23 cents a piece. So you buy emotions, priceless. You can't buy them. This is when you really see a different side of the personality. It's like, okay, nice guy, little raised, funny man, jokes, but now it's like, okay. See, this is, this is no joke. You're a killing machine. This is what makes you so special. So you see the flames, and I want to get all these different looks just in your eyes, and just see this, the personality of soul. And afterwards, you know, right here, this is no joke. When I started out, it was always about the quote star, the the action guy who would be surrounded by nondescript adversaries and, and co-stars. It just didn't matter. Not anymore. I killed you four times in Brazil. I know. <laughs> four different occasions. Come on, guys. We're falling behind schedule here. Let's go right now. We're ready to shoot, but now we need to add that extra little. 30 minutes behind. Line them up perfect. All seven cameras running now. I thought that working with guys that really had a potential to take the action genre to another level would be very important. That was a dream come true right there. When I was 10, I had that dream. Right, 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 right. Action! You know, I always said that the action films really changed dramatically with the first Batman. That was the day when um, actors actually could <laughs> Velcro their muscles on. They could jump into a rubber suit and zip it up and bingo. And lately it's been somewhat floundering because guys that are willing to take the bumps and the bruises and go through the pain are not in abundance. Everyone protect your ears, please. In three, Good two, luck, guys. one, action. Wait a minute, guys, don't put that out. Don't put that out. Do not put the fire out. Just run, boom, run, boom. Burn, roll on the test. Macro, macro, macro. Look at that great shot. That's a fire. That's fire, boy. Yeah. Oh, you messed up. You should have had them like facing the camera while they're running towards the camera. While you're still alive, why don't you come over to me? This is really cool. Yeah. She's telling him now. That was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I was giving. Yeah, I was looking when I came And so I saved his life, but he doesn't even know it. But the fourth guy is has a rocket launcher. After I, I turn it, oh, it's too late, and he's hunkering down on me, but I still have to blow up this chopper. I can't get through the wall of fire. I know that Eric Roberts is heading for this chopper with the girl, so I run around the side, and I'm looking, I, I, I don't have a grenade, I have nothing to blow this thing up, I can't blow it with a pistol, and I find these warheads, they're like 150 pounds, and I can't lift them. At the same time, this building is falling, and it's knocking on a statue, which is gonna crush Terry Crews, who's Hail Caesar. He's running full tilt. And just the last second, he vaults as he as the head goes by. Heisman. Like a Heisman trophy move. And he rolls into the dirt. And there's a guy coming up behind me. He pulls out this giant razor. That we <laughs> Straight say, razor. And he literally throws it, which I've never seen done like a, like a boomerang. Takes the guy, his zippo out, runs over to me, he goes, what the hell are you doing? I said, I, I need, he goes, that's a man-sized bomb. Stand away, boy. Where do you want it? Go, and he heaves this 150-pound thing in the air like a football. It is coming down right towards this chopper. And in midair, I take it out bah, 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 with the 45s, which creates a, a bomb that, that takes out this whole section. Pulls up Eric Roberts, goes, uh-oh. Chopper gone, he bails, he goes the opposite direction, and that's when we take head to our finale.
Now, did you just make this up just now? Yeah. So this was completely unplanned. You just came over here, talked it out, made up that whole thing. <laughs> He's an on-the-cuff type of guy. He never has a plan. If there's a plan that's made, he'll th throw it away. The script is basically a guideline. The call sheet is just an advisory. We never do it. He likes to think on his feet on, on the job. You always want to leave room for discovery, because in those moments, uh, you, you find things that you couldn't anticipate. When you're working that way, everything is not going to be a bullseye. It's going to be a miss. I, I consider my life, seriously, a, a 10% on the target life. 90% misses. But those 10 counted. I'm the words a little tighter than I should, but... Yeah, it is pretty tight. If they're ready. Ready and action! Cut it! Lift your legs slide. Three, three cameras. Three cameras. Lift your legs. Like, yeah. Put it down. Yeah, like that. Nice legs here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My wife goes, okay, want some no. pasta? I've been holding this for an hour. <laughs> Please take a bite. <laughs> Stop. Watch this. That was what Times actors are exhausted, and I say to them, Look, I'm dying, everyone's dying, but you're gonna be sitting on a couch with your grandchild someday, and you're gonna look at that, and you're gonna loathe yourself because you didn't dig down. This is the time, this is it. This is where you really show your character. Before you know it, you're in the moment. And when you're in the moment, people oh, wow. tend to follow you, and you just go with it. Don't go in, guys. Hold on. Let's put it out. Let's put out the fire before anybody in. Effects and stunts only. That's just, that was great. Beautiful. So uh, now, there'll be the continuation. We'll get these great shots, the whole place, and all that stuff. But got it. You know, you know. No, I felt mm -hmm. fine. I just want to, the timing on the truck was okay? Perfect. Yeah. Good. A lot of guys have muscles. A lot of strong men in this world. I think it's important to show that even under all this ability and strength, there's a fragile side, a side that can be affected. And you gotta show your soul, otherwise you're just another piece of equipment. You're in the shadow world, you're a dark guy. And how do you say it? I'm a, I'm a, I'm a hitman, I'm a contractor, I'm a soldier of fortune. I, I, I face death every day, I could die tomorrow. I can't explain that. So in a sense, this is a doom position, not because you're doing anything wrong, your job pulls you in that direction, and her wanting to build a life is the complete opposite. It'll be so great. Are we in it? Let's go. Ready when you are. Okay, Here we go. Let's take it out your starting position. Action! It's hard sometimes for an action actor to show a sensitive side because it's considered weakness or you're fearful that you might come off as sentimental and now I think we've become less personal in the filmmaking. It's less emotional and much more visually explosive, but it doesn't tug on the heart as much as I think it should. Wait, everything all right? Yeah. We 
is he? he uh, he's a friend. Kind of late. You got a name? Friend. She just told you. When he goes, friend, he starts to move. You, you, you're going after him. So now you're here without any dialogue. Okay? Then I thought things. Well, I thought things were really great. No, no, wait, 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 wait. I thought things were really great between us. Maybe for you. Maybe for you, but not for me. Right. I felt like you never cared about getting into my life or, or letting me into yours. Stop! Yeah, sure, I did. No, no, you didn't. Not the way that people who really care about each other really do. I mean, I've known you for over a year. I don't even know what you do for a living. Remember I said yesterday, you really don't want this to happen. No. So, it's, if he would just go, all right, sorry, I told, all right, man, but he's, he's not giving that up yet. I've known you for over a year and a half, and I don't even know what you do for a living. Well, what's the matter? When I'm here, I'm with you. That matters. What matters is, when you're here, you're not really here. You're a good man. I love you, but... Lace! Oh, I hate his voice. This, all, this is his security. This is his power. This is his manhood. He's on his bike. You're stopping him. There's more distance here, and he's saying, do not let him come down here. But if he's on the porch, he's only six feet away. And I, knowing him, he would go through the screen door, and I'd be the end of that. Did you say something? Don't let him come down here. Please tell me you understand what I'm saying. You have to understand. I understand. You take care. Lee. They say it's good to have a friend. Sometimes it's good to have a benevolent adversary that pushes you a little bit beyond what you think you can do. Hey, what are you, hey, how you guys doing? What's going on? Okay. All right, guys, pictures up. Here we go. Ready, action. Big Bonnie Ross, what are you doing here? Bigger trend mouse. <laughs> Cut. Yeah, they said this couldn't be done, and they're like, thank God I've got two magnanimous friends who gave their time freely, and then, you know, they, they really put out for this. So you settle in here. Mm. Well, we'll see. You're studying me. I think we've been rehearsing for this scene about the last 20, 25 years. And uh, <laughs> here today, it's culminated. The whole thing came together just perfectly. I mean, we have had this extraordinary friendship for so many years, promoting movies and promoting and helping each other with movie openings. We have the same kind of interests, and now all of a sudden this whole thing came together. And I think it is because we don't get paid. I mean, it's like in bodybuilding in the old days. When we made no money, we had the most fun. I appreciate it, because I think, you know, it's never gonna happen again. It probably, you know, we've got such busy lives and such diverse lives. And then, anyway, I'm busy. Yeah. So, you know, so, well, like, like I said, I'm busy. Ready? Action. What it takes is a little army. Only an idiot would do this job. How much? No, oh, like I said. I've always thought that the best projects ever performed have always been done with an incredible ensemble. You can't trust me. There it is. I'm always at odds with myself. What I thought the night before is not necessarily going to happen the following morning. I just thought I'd try to, you know, sweeten a little bit, just subtly change the tone. We just uh, sometimes have to wing it, and quite often it turns out better than what the original plan was. So you lose this social inhibition, so you go like this. What you talk about? APD, avoiding personality disorder. You think too much. Well, look, everybody's got a problem, Toll Road. You're an unusual guy. I'm gonna cut it right there. How's that feel, guys? Walt Disney spends $100 million trying to make a place look like this. And look at this. This is a hundred years old. It's the best set you've ever seen in your life. And it better be, better be quiet. Okay, have fun, guys. Action. How many soldiers? 
Maybe a couple of hundred. Wouldn't take much more than that to control a space that small. Great. They've got a small army. What do we got? Four and a half men. <laughs> Not so funny. <laughs> Sometimes I think the, the best actors around are a little eccentric. Some people may call it crazy, but there's a method to their madness. And then I hear the engine. Headlight comes through. Bang. Mickey. And that is pretty much a cut. Here. Very good. Okay, here. And what I want to know is when I get off here, where are we going? And then I'm starting to get on to this. That's when I mount you? Yes, you <laughs> know. When you think about it, your career is based on being someone other than yourself. It's a control craziness. Quite often, a lot of actors are more comfortable playing characters other than themselves because they get rid of their inhibitions. And it's my job to try to make them feel secure in those choices. So you, your first thing would be taking a couple of years to do a couple of initials. And I'll just slip right in. That's what I say? Yeah, I just say that. And I'm going to come right in and go, we had to get rid of Gunner. Yeah. Ready? Action. Hey, man, it's taking me a couple of years to do yeah, You're taking you a couple of years. Yeah, me and me. It's taking you a couple of years to do a couple of initials. Okay, so you're taking me? No, me. So you go, it's taking you a couple of years to do a couple of initials. Brother, it's taking you a couple of years to do a couple of initials. That's so it. if you want to do it, let's rock and roll. There you go. Ready? Action. Brother, it's taking you a couple of years to do a couple of missions, so let's do it. Yeah. Can I write my lines right down here? Yeah, you can. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you something. Remember we was last time? Where were we? We were ass deep in that mud and blood. Nigeria. Yeah, your hand was all shot to shit. You were bleeding all over the place, and I was bleeding, and you know what I did? I promised myself. I don't want to die all alone full of holes in the mud and the blood. I want to die with something that counts. I want to die with a woman. I want to die with someone who well, cares about me, you know. I don't want to die for a woman. I want to die laying next to a woman. That's what I want. Christmas time. Yeah, I can smell them from here. Here, I'll take my thing out here and, and do it throat. just underhand from here. <laughs> <laughs> you flash fuck up. Right. <laughs> I'm feeling a little lucky tonight. I'm feeling very accurate. Another time, come yeah? on. Come on, take him on. Come on, Christmas, bring it, baby. I encourage him, please. He never beat you in your life. Come, come on, on, Christmas, no disgrace in losing. I think it's very, very important for a director to be respectful of an actor because it's an extremely delicate balance. And uh, I know I've been on the receiving end of people that really weren't sensitive to that, and it can have an effect. I was uh, Sorry. doing Farewell, My Lovely, and I got a small part on it. And I'm on the set, I'm excited, I'm thrilled. It's 1973, 74. So I'm up there and I'm working. Uh, I'm, I'm just, wow, here I am, I'm the one ready to go. And the producer of this film comes in. And he goes, uh, who's that guy in the bed? He goes, oh, we just hired him, it's okay, it's a small part. He goes, can you shoot around him? He goes, why? Oh, it's, it's just a small part. He goes, well, where's the other guy? He says, in England. He goes, you can't do better than that? And I'm, I'm looking at him, is there like someone standing behind me? Who's that rude? He goes, I just, to hell with it, let's go. So we do the scene, and uh, I'm needless to say, like a little insecure and angry. Then they go, okay, break for lunch. And they bring all these hamburgers on the set. And they start passing them around to everybody. And as they get close to me, this makeup man does, don't even give him one, he won't be around for the, he won't be around after lunch. I say, what'd you say? He says, you giving me lip? I said, am I giving you lip? You're the one that insulted me. He says, I'm not even worth it, gonna be around for food, and I'm giving you lip. Just then, Robert Mitchell goes, what's all this shit? Let's go eat. That's my introduction into big-time filmmaking. So now I, I make sure that everyone gets a hamburger. 
All right, we got a, just about everyone here representing the different groups. What I'd like to do is Quiet. work what we call French showers. I remember we were falling behind the schedule, and I thought I'd suggest something new to the Brazilian crew, which is called French hours. That means the food is actually brought to you, so you don't have to stop and lose an hour, hour and a half for lunch. But the majority of the workers that are not working on that particular spot would go eat, and it would be just the same, just normal. And the reward would be that we would work at the most 10 and a half hours a day, instead of 12 hours, and lose that momentum. This is what we did on Rambo, and that's why I think the film has such energy. And I'd like to do that here. I know it's unusual for Brazil, but I think you would be happy well, if we tried it for one week. And if you don't like it, we don't do it. Obviously, it didn't go over well. Maybe there's a translation problem, but <laughs> I failed miserably. Uh, guys, no pressure. This has to be perfect on the first take. On action, you start to look at the plane. Then you stay there until I say, hey! And then you turn around, you get blasted. Action, plane! Hey! Hey! Pow, 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 pow. Shoot those four guys, then I go, what? Right there. And he's trying to pull his fist off because they're right here. And then I'm looking at him like that and go, and I repeat a line earlier in the day. He said to me, you look nervous. Now I go, you look nervous. And right then, he starts to, just a, that's it. All right. Pow, pow. Hey! You look nervous. You know, it never ceases to amaze me that when you get to a location, it's never quite the way you see it in your eye. You can go there before you film, and it looks kind of quiet and sterile, but then you get there, and you see this, the set, and you see the possibilities. But when it gets right down to it, it's about the character's dilemma and trying to find the inner workings of the men themselves that will make it identifiable and uh, keep the storyline going and not get so hung up on the actual physicalities of the location. I'm gone. I've given up on life. You still have hope. You still are romantic. Yeah. And I have to get mine back. I've seen that nice return. You mean the tall guy? We got gear. No, that's fine. Actually, the hairier, the meaner, the better. We were casting soldiers for the dictator's army, and when I went down there, all I saw were male models. Basically, you know, the attack of the male model here. Then I thought, wow, well, Brazil is the hub of mixed martial arts fighting. Yeah, I have a gym that in uh, in mm -hmm. Ukraine, it's uh, nearby here, and uh, we ha we we make a fight every month over there. So you can make one for us? For sure. Okay, for sure. we'll be there. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, sir. It's great. Thanks for coming. Oh, my pleasure. My pleasure. It's yes. love meeting Elvis Presley. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> lots of them. <laughs> the first time we met in Brazil, and I, again, I'm honored to be in the presence of such legendary fighters. When you see two guys in the room going at each other, it's reminiscent of ancient Rome. These men are down there fighting just for the sake of fighting. They're there to entertain us, but they're really not. They're doing something that is just so uh, important to them. What person has the real will to overcome something that they don't think they can do, that they're actually afraid of? You know, it's, it's will over skill. They swallow their fear and dig down deep, and in the end, it's their heart that proves victorious, much more than muscles. I would kick his ass, but I would say anything. 
So all these powerful MMA fighters volunteered to be in the film. It changed the whole casting process. It may not seem like much on the surface, but when the camera goes by, it senses that these men can do great harm, that they're not just actors, they're the real deal. And getting real faces, faces that have pathos in them and that have some truth in them, is very, very important in supporting the star. It's the complete picture, it's the concept. You're only as good as your support group and your surrounding. And once that all melds together, you have a truthful picture in a, in a, a realistic situation. On action, Steve gets out. He comes out and goes, move that goddamn truck, like that. These guys start to come out. That truck, I don't want to block this easy. The nose of the truck has got to come here. I mean, run it into the curb, I don't care. You'll stay here, and then Steve will say, get back in, when the truck is there. As soon as he goes, back. We'll go. sign a couple minutes. OK, and then we're going to follow one camera. We're following the two giants, right? OK. One is on him, and then the other one stays on the car. OK, we'll come around the boat. And then we go along the boat. And this one here just carries you all the way to your duck in and the truck's all going by. Everybody go okay. that way. Here we go. When time is not on your side and you set your cameras up and you've rehearsed a couple of times, it's now that moment where you have to depend upon the eye of your cameraman to hopefully capture somewhat of your vision. It's never going to be perfect, but if you can just get the energy and the sense of urgency, then I think you've accomplished the mission. This is where you must really depend upon the vision of other people, hope that everyone's on the same page. times when you think that you have it under control and all of a sudden the clouds open up and it starts to rain you go oh my god how am I gonna make this work the one thing I know is the best laid plans don't always happen something always comes up that takes you in a different direction here's the problem with this whole setup if a guy is coming in here he this is the worst place for a desk if you want a dramatic effect there's no discovery. You got a guy at the back end. He's here. I always had his desk here. There was a, there was a problem. Well, wait a minute. Maybe we can avoid all this crap. Let's just say you have. He's there. Um, is is he here? Is he here? Is he here? Yeah. Where are you going? See now he says. So that's why he's loading. Is where are you going? I'm not going anywhere. Yeah, I have to change it to like. Guy comes in, Monroe is here. You lose that girl, I'll skin you. Garz is over there, or there with the easel. I'll skin you. And just then, you got one of these guys with the faces coming with a bag of uh, it's open zip money. Comes in, bang, really, Jeffrey, he drops it right here. Once Sly gets to where he wants to get, once his journey's been reached for that particular issue, you realise that, you know, oh my God, that's what he was looking for. His demands are a means to an end. It's not, you know, it's not something personal. And that painting is slashed. And it's back there, so he's like getting rid of who he was. The real Sly, I know the real Sly. I mean, he's hard on everyone because he's hard on himself. I mean, once you realize that, he's not asking you to do anything that he wouldn't ask himself to do. You got any brushes? You got any knives? Yeah, yes, sir. Any brushes and knives are coming out. Drew? Drew? Give me a paint brush off the easel. When you're doing a film or doing any kind of project, I think that you have to be almost irrationally passionate because this is 
your baby. It's something that you understand more than anyone else. You can't expect anyone else to feel it the way you do, just the same way uh, no one can understand how you feel about your child, because it's part of you. It's, it's in your blood, it's in your DNA. Him? You're going Van Gogh here. It's like getting dressed for a prom in a dark closet. Because you don't know until you get into that editing room what you've got. Screaming, ready? Action. Bang, bang. Ah! Bang, bang, bang. Got it. Cool. A little, little more the other way, Dano. There he is, right there. OK. Action. When you get there, it takes on a whole different life. You you can't figure that out sitting in an office in California. Half apple. I see the flames. It looks great. Okay, good. And you guys are alert. Action. Nobody owns me. Cut. Thank you. Cut. Just one. Cut. Call that guy. Hello. 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 H